Hey, Lincoln. Uh, as it pertains to Jordan, Eric Gentry, and Raylan Goforth, are you expecting to have them available this weekend, or where do they stand? Well, we hope to. I mean, the, the bye week has certainly been uh, helpful for all of those guys. Um, they've made really good progress, and I think we're still going to take advantage of the fact that we still have, you know, well over two days, you know, two and a half days here until we play. Um, so they've been limited. They haven't been full participants, but not anybody that I would want to say a definite no or yes on right now. I plan, I, mean, I fully plan on them traveling, being there, and probably something that comes down to the wire in terms of a, a decision on on the three of those guys. Adam? Yeah, Lincoln, yesterday Caleb was talking about how he just kind of felt there was like a quiet confidence in the locker room even after the Utah loss. I'm curious how you saw that translate to practice the last two weeks. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with the, the confidence and the disappointed but not defeated kind of attitude in the locker room since then. And um, yeah, it was a hungry locker room after that. I mean, I think they would have went out and played another game right then. Uh, if we had it our way, that's that's what we would love to have done. Um, and I think the key in all this is uh, you can be, you can have all that in the immediate emotions after. Like, do you, do you maintain that hunger, that fight, that that desire to go get better and and go become what we can become? Do you, do you maintain that? Right? Is it just a, a heat of the moment emotion, or is it something real that's much bigger? And uh, that's been our challenge. And obviously, we've had you know two weeks, uh, which it's been a long two weeks. It's, it's been good, but we're uh, we've, we've practiced well. We had a good bye week. Uh, we've had a good week of prep. I mean, I, we're, we're eager to go play. I mean, th this game can't get here soon enough. Jack? Uh, sticking with Caleb, he, he said that after the Utah game, you told him you were proud of him. Has your message to him shifted at all as you go into the back half of the season? As in, what are you telling him as you try to make a run? Uh, just I think like any player, just trying to continue to get better. And I thought he took some – I thought he took some some good steps in that game. I thought he he, he played the majority of the game at a, a at a very high level, um, and and uh, made a lot of plays and did he did a lot of the things that we said leading into the game that we wanted to do. He did a lot of those extremely well, and uh, so I think uh, it's it's cool to see him growing and, and learning and, and understanding more and more, you know, how we want to attack people, how people are going to try to attack us. Um, you know, understanding kind of flow of the game, you know, when to take your chances. I mean, all that it's uh, you can see, you know, kind of with each time he, he goes out there, he's he's getting more and more, I think, of a feel for that. So no, I was I was proud of the way he played. Um, but, uh, you know, again, we, we they're, they're still you got to be proud of the steps taken. They're there. We got to keep taking them. Eric. Lincoln, you guys have, have relied heavily on Makai and, and Sierra at those cornerback spots. What have you liked um, from, from their play this year? They've been our two studious guys. Um, I mean, without a doubt, I mean, Makai's been, you know, Makai's been one of our most explosive players defensively with some of the big plays that he's had. And, and uh, the nature of our defense, he's going to be put in some one-on-one -on -one situations. And he's, you know, he's won a lot more than, uh, than he has it. So he, he's been a very consistent performer. And, you know, big challenge for him here in the second half is to, to continue to continue to take those steps and make more of those explosive plays that were big in so many of the early wins. Uh, yeah, and I and I would say Sierra's just been very steady for us. He really has. He's uh, you know he's he's in the right call. Um, he's he's typically in position. He doesn't make many mental mistakes. I think he's he's getting more and more confident with this technique and the scheme and starting to cut loose and play more aggressive. Which you know that's that would be the expectation for him. Is all right, your first kind of real true kind of first half year of college football has passed. Like it's time to grow up. It's time to continue to, to progress and mature as a player and, and become, uh, become more and more aggressive and look to make more and more plays. And I think he'll, I think he'll do that. We've seen, uh, you know, quite a few glimpses of that on the practice field. So um, I said, we've got some other guys that we certainly are confident enough to put in the game, but it's, it's been, uh, it's been tough to take those two out right now. Adam. Yeah, Lincoln, um, Damani and Corey look like guys who missed some time at practice this week. Just what is the update on them? Uh, nothing serious um, with either one. Damani won't be available this weekend. Um, 
Uh, Corey's had just a couple of nagging things that have made him just very slightly limited, but um, uh, hope you don't expect to have him available this weekend. Ryan Abraham. I hate like just uh, Arizona's got an explosive offense with Jaden Delore has been able to do their really good receiving core. What have you kind of seen on film and what kind of challenges uh, did they present on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, they're, they're easily one of the best offenses that we've played. I mean, maybe, maybe you know, maybe the best. Um, it's a it's a good group. Quarterbacks, you know, quarterback really makes them go. Um, so it's so, so dangerous with with uh, his ability to, to scramble and create. He, where he's really unique is he's he's so elusive. Um, I mean, there's you watch the tapes. You feel like the guy should have been sacked like five more times. <laughs> he could actually people actually get him on the ground. Um, he's. He's an explosive athlete and very, very elusive. I mean, in some ways, almost like a tailback in the way he, he evades defenders. Um, and and he's, he's, you know, he tells a confident kid. I mean, he 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 takes the shots, he takes chances, and and uh, he's giving those receivers chances to make a lot of plays. And and they've they've certainly made their share of them. Uh, so when you got a, a a tremendous athlete like that, you've got you know a handful of of really good productive receivers that have skill sets that complement each other. Um, you know, that looks like they've stayed pretty healthy, you know, kind of been kind of the same group the whole year and they've gotten better and better as the years went on. And, you know, obviously they put up some, some nice points here, especially as of late. So um, it's a super challenge. I mean, it is, it's a challenge to all levels of the defense. Um, we know we got to have a very impactful game from our front. I mean, that one obviously stands out um, and we got to do a good job on the receivers, especially in scramble situations. Ryan Karchi. Hey, Lincoln, I know, you know, at this point in the season, you talked about, you know, young players developing and maybe taking that next step over the next couple of weeks. I, I wondered, you know, with a lot of them sort of approaching that point in which they've, you know, played maybe four games and are kind of at that red shirt limit, how much are you guys weighing just the future roster construction and the potential of red shirting players versus you know, trying to develop them in the moment and obviously give the team the best chance to win this year? Yeah, kind of like all you said. I mean, that's a that's a decision that you know us, the kid, everybody have to make. I, we've certainly, in the past, I mean, with red shirts available, and even with you've got a handful of guys here on the team that still have a, a COVID year, um, you know, COVID year available. We've always been of the the mindset that look, if, unless you're just not going to play any, um, that if you, if your body is healthy enough to play and you've earned an opportunity to get out there on the field, that you'd be crazy to not take that opportunity. I mean, guys get five years, and, and I just uh, you know you just in this game, it's such a physical game, such a tough game um, that to us, if there's ever been any doubt, we've encouraged guys to go ahead and play, take the reps, and get better. And so that's what we've worked towards with the guys. Obviously, every individual situation is different. Uh, guys have. You know, different amount of eligibility left, different roles, um, different potential roles. I mean, there's there's so much to it. So, yeah, you've got to add it all up at the end, um, you know, and everybody collectively has got to make the best decision they can. But we've certainly encouraged guys that if it's close to, to think about playing because you never know, you know, you never know if all of a sudden you come up the next year and your body's not healthy enough to do it. Um, and then you could have played that year. And now you're burning the red shirt on year where you can't play any. I mean, you just, you know, you just – the, the four game bill, I think, has been a good thing for college football because it does give you some leeway. But I, I think guys are good enough to play more than four games. For the most part, they should be playing ball. Ryan Abraham. Hey, Lincoln. The the Pac-12 this year, it's been really tough on road teams. Like home teams have just have a, a great record. You guys probably have the best road win uh, at Oregon State. Like Oregon got one at Washington State. But what's what's been the difficulties you think in the in the conference playing on the road? And what have you kind of learned from those first couple? games at Oregon State and Utah about road games? Well, it's a sign of it's a sign of a good conference. I mean, that's college football. 70% of the time, the home team wins. And, um, you know, and I, I think it's a, a good league. I mean, I don't think there's a bunch of just bum teams. Um, I think there's a lot of a lot of quality teams in the league, and it's hard to be quality teams on the road. I mean, that's, you know, and, and it's one of those years where I think, you know, kind of, who you end up playing on the road and who you catch there and who you who you don't will will be impactful. Um, you know, we kind of went through one of those um, the the last year at my previous spot. You know, where if you look at the three teams that came down to, you know, one team got both of them on the road, one got 
one of each and one got both of them at home. And uh, that's sometimes that's how it shakes it out. So, uh, but the great teams find a way to get it done. Um, this one will be, you know, really important for us because we got a, a pretty big home stand, obviously, um, coming back after that, um, which will be, which will be very important. Um, but no, I just think it speaks to the quality of teams in the league and um, again, great ones find a way.